Hi, thanks for clicking in. You're either here because I sent you a link to view this video, or you did a Google search for Flyline Cable Cam, and I came up. Either way, thanks for watching. What this video is is a quick overview of the Flyline Cable Cam system. I'll talk about parts and pieces, how easy it is to rig. Um, I'll go through some basic features of this system, some basic safety of the system that's involved, and um, we'll kind of get an overview of what the cable cam system has to offer. So I run camera cranes and remote heads, obviously the cable cam system as well. What I don't have is a wireless mic setup, so sorry about the echo. You're going to have to listen through uh, the whole video with the echo of my shop, but we'll try to minimize it as much as possible. Anyway, hope you enjoy the video. Let's get into it. Okay, so this is the Flyline cable cam system trolley. That's what lives in this box. This is everything kind of what, what goes on the trolley. There are other parts and rigging pieces that, that we'll get into later, but inside this box is the controller. This is the DX6. This is the controller for the trolley. This tells the trolley how fast to go. You can set your endpoints on that. Um, that's what this is. This is the, the, the trolley controller. Um, this is an accessory rack. This lives uh, on the trolley itself. You can mount your accessories, wireless, batteries, things of that nature. It lives on the trolley itself. Um, and then here is the um, Kenyan gyro. And what this does is this helps stabilize the line. Underneath the trolley is my Ronin. That's what stabilizes the camera. That's the gimbal part. This lives on the trolley itself and takes out some of the sway that's induced on the line itself. And that's what this does. This is the Kenyan gyro. This is the actual trolley itself. Um, you can see it's not a very big unit. Um, the trolley lives on the line just like this. The Ronin hangs down from below. Um, drive motor, this is the receiving unit from the, the uh, DX6. This is the motion control. This helps you set your endpoints. It allows you to do a thing called ping pong mode, which you can automatically set. It'll drive back and forth on the line by itself. It's um, got a caliper here that reads off of one of the wheels. Um, drive wheel in the middle. On the back side is your drive belt to your pulley. Um, you can change your pulley setups. This can be, um, this is the medium size, there's a smaller and a larger, depending on your, your drive um, needs on the cable. Uh, has to do with incline, things of that nature. And then these are the drive, um, the drive wheels in the middle, these are the uh, wheels that sit on the line outside of the trolley. So we'll get into that a little bit later. I'll show you how to set that all up, but uh, this is basically what comes inside the box. So I'm going to briefly talk about what the cable cam runs on, the line that it runs on and how you go to your anchor points. First of all, let's briefly discuss your anchor points. They have to be able to withstand anywhere between 300 and 1500 pounds of tension strength, okay? So you can't put it on a light stand to another light stand. It would never work. What you want to do is look for substantial anchor points. So they could be two scissor lifts, it can be a, a column that's available on the structure that, that you're using, two a scissor lift, two columns, two big trees that will uh, allow 1,500 pounds of tension strength. When you go into a venue, there's usually some sort of a railing system. Um, you, you want to check with the riggers if you're going to put it on a piece of truss. It has to be able to withstand, at the maximum, 1,500 pounds of tension force. So your anchor points are important. Once you've determined what your anchor points are, you need to, to attach to the anchor point. Multiple ways of doing that. I use span sets. Span sets wrap around the anchor point, and then we jump from the span set to a number of various other things. You can go from your span set to a shackle, to the rope, depending on where you're starting your line. My start line usually goes directly to uh, the, to the um, shackle, to the span set, to the anchor point. That's my starting point. At the other end, you want to put in some sort of uh, gear that reads the amount of tension on the line. I use a Dillon dynamometer. This, uh, this allows you to read what sort of tension you're putting on the line. Um, the way you adjust your tension is with a come along or a ratchet strap, some sort of pulley system. Um, this is a four ton um, ratcheting uh, come along. This allows you to tension that rope. This will read the tension. This allows you to tension it. The rope that we use for the fly line is Dyneema 8mm. This has a braking strength of 14, almost 14,000 pounds. 
13,700, something like that. So, and then above the main line, you run another safety line. On that safety line, what that allows is if your main line breaks, something goes wrong, the trolley is captured by the safety line that runs above it. So this is what, what I use. Um, it's just a zip line trolley um, to, a, to, a, to, a, to a cord that holds the, the uh, trolley in case of the breakage on the main line. So again, check with your rigger. If you're gonna go into a venue, make sure that those anchor points can hold. Check your tension. You definitely need a dynamometer, some sort of ratcheting tensioner to get to your point where you wanna be. Those points are dependent on how far your line is run, how much weight is hanging on the line. There are a lot of factors that go into it. Do your research um, to figure out where you wanna be on your tension and then use the proper gear to get there for you. So what we'll do now is I'm gonna run my line. I have some test points that I've, that I've put in my shop. I'll run to those lines, show you how I do it, show you how actually this comes into play while I'm rigging that line. So inside my shop, I had two concrete pillars, and inside the two concrete pillars is a piece of I-beam. Um, I had enough gap to where I could run a piece of aircraft cable through there to uh, a carabiner. This is one of my anchor points in my shop. I use it to run the cable cam system so that I can check systems, and I can also demo it for clients that want to see it. So from here is my, my first anchor point. At the other end of my shop, I also have a second anchor point, and I'll show you what I did down there. So we're at the back of my shop. Let's talk about the anchor point I put in here. This is a piece of Unistrat, um, inch and three quarter lag bolts that, that go into the stud in the wall, plenty strong enough to hold the amount of tension that I'm gonna put on in the shop here. So this will be my first point. This will be my fixed point. No ratcheting, no dynamometer here. This is just the fixed point. So to this mount, I put on my locking carabiner and then I attach my Dyneema. Now again, this is the starting point. So I just put in a knot. Uh, I use a double figure eight. I'm not gonna get into knots here. That's uh, some other, uh, other video um, and other websites that can tell you how to do that. But I use a double figure eight. I jump into this, in, into this carabiner and then we head back down to that side. I'll put in the ratcheting, I'll put in the dynamometer, then we'll put on the trolley and we'll see what that looks like. So I've gone ahead, I've attached the Dyneema to the come along, to the dynamometer. I pre-tensioned the line we're at about 300 pounds, as you can see on the dynamometer. So I'm gonna go ahead and assemble the fly line trolley and put it on the line. So being that this isn't really a how-to video on the fly line, more of a general overview of what it does and, and how kind of the basic setup works, I've gone ahead and taken the liberty of putting the fly line on the cable. All the parts are assembled on it, so I'll bring you in a little closer and we can look at each of the different parts. Okay, so as we come in closer, you can see that the Canon gyro is on. And again, that helps stabilize the trolley for sway when it's going across the line. Uh, these are the accessory trays where you can put on accessories that may be needed. The battery lives underneath. It's safety by Velcro and a second tie. Um, if the wheels jump off the line, there is a safety mechanism here that will automatically catch onto the line and it is on both sides here as well. Uh, this is our front wheel. Uh, here's the calibration wheel that again tells the trolley where it's at on the line. So that's pretty much the rig. Okay, so because this is an overview of the system, I've taken a lot of liberties to, to skip steps that, that we have to do to make this thing operate properly and run safely. Um, this is our safety line. It's uh, connected to the trolley on this end um, and then would run on that second line that we talked about earlier. It goes from anchor point to anchor point. It follows the trolley as it moves. The safety goes with it. Um, super simple, but extremely important. So this video was intended to be a quick overview of the Flyline cable cam system. Um, it, I just wanted to show you how simple it was to set up, talk about anchor points briefly, some of the hardware, parts and pieces of the Flyline, and how they work together. It is by no means a how-to video. It doesn't encompass everything for safety. It doesn't encompass a lot of things that I do on the job to make the Flyline run properly and to make sure that it's run safely. 
If you uh, look further down in the YouTube channel, there are some videos of things that I've done with the fly line that I could post. There are some other things that I've done that I can't post yet, but um, it will give you an overview of kind of what the, the cable cam system can do. So again, uh, I hope you would consider using this in the future for your shoots. It's a really cool system. It's just another piece of the overall shoot environment, if you will, but it is a very cool piece, super simple to use, and I would hope you would consider it. Thanks for watching.